Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jadley, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so grateful that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. We have two wonderful guests for you today. A little bit later on, we'll be meeting Claire Eckerd. She is the author of Bentley and the Magic Sticks, a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. But first up, we're going to be meeting John Corey Stringer. He's going to be here to celebrate his really hilarious Blue and Room series. You know, I'm really excited to have you meet these two great authors and find out all about their fantastic books. I'm also really excited to meet you in person. Now that the folks here in the United States, now that, that things are starting to reopen, we are really excited because we are getting back out into the community, doing a live reading with your kids events. And we have two great live events happening in the very near future. First up on the calendar, Connect Fest, Family Music Festival happening August 28th at the Cape Cod Fairgrounds in Falmouth, Massachusetts. My buddy Phil Joel, he's been on the show. He'll be one of the headlining acts on the main stage. I'll be performing my totally interactive family magic show on one of the speaker stages. And of course, our Reading With Your Kids booth will be there for you to come on over, meet some great books, have some great fun, and maybe be a part of a future episode of the show. On September 18th, we'll be in downtown Lowell, Massachusetts, beautiful Lowell, Massachusetts, for the Lowell Kinetic Sculpture Race. I am so stoked to be appearing at that event. It's going to be a blast. I just can't wait. The best way to find out about these events and other future events is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, sign up for our free newsletter. You also want to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids. And on Instagram, it's at reading with your kids and it's at Jedly Magic on Twitter. Join us right now from Lexington in the state of Kentucky. Really, really excited. We're going to have some fun tonight. Our guest today is here to celebrate his wonderful picture books, Blue and Rue. Please welcome to the show, John Corey Stringer. Hey, Corey, how are you? I'm great. That was an awesome introduction. We need some pyro to go off when you. There we go. You, <laughs> it's a pyro, a little bit of electric guitar twing on that. <laughs> Let's crank it up. Uh, Corey and I just discovered that we both have a love of, of loud music and professional wrestling and all sorts of shenanigans. So we're going to have, have a good time today. Why don't we start by you introducing us to Blue and Rue. I, I understand there. this is inspired by real dogs. Yes, uh, Blue and Rue are indeed real-life rescue dogs. They are actual best friends in real life. Um, Blue is the one that uh, garnered uh, national attention first because Blue, uh, when Blue was newborn, we're talking like maybe two or three days old, um, there was an intentionally set fire at the animal shelter she was staying at with her mother and her siblings and some other animals, you know. And uh, the fire wiped out almost all the animals in oh. that building, including her mom. But Blue miraculously survived and only a few days old, right? So they transferred Blue uh, to the Humane Society here in Lexington, Kentucky to recover from, you know, the fire, uh, mainly smoke inhalation, which she still has trouble with to this day. She'll still, you know, some health issues, but she's perfectly fine. Uh, so they stayed there until uh, Blue was eight weeks old, at which point my wife and I just adopted her. Like we saw her and saw those blue eyes and we just snatched her up and almost instantly Blue's personality started coming through. Just it's exactly the way it is in the book. Is Blue is a lunatic. Uh, <laughs> no respect for personal boundaries or property value or anything. Blue just goes nuts. And then shortly after she started living with us, she met Rue, who was another rescue dog. So they instantly became best friends. Uh, they see each other every day. They play. They have sleepovers. They hang out. 
uh, and then their shenanigans together, I was like, I gotta, you know, this is gold, it's gold, Jerry, it's gold. So I had to start, you know, drawing pictures, and that's how I started, I started drawing these little doodles of blue and red, doing things, and um, people really liked them. And then I just thought of a story, and so the first book was called Night Night Blue. And that was a full-on children's book. I mean, we're talking like for uh, you know preschoolers, kindergarten, stuff like that. It rhymed. Uh, the humor in it was more gentle. And then as the series progressed, it got more cartoonish, more like Looney Tunes. And then I introduced the Rue character in the third book. And as soon as I brought the Rue character into the books, it completely changed. It became uh, not just for children. It became for everyone, like a Pixar movie or Garfield, you know, anything like that. And now, now, and they they just they skyrocketed as soon as with the introduction of Rue, and it became a, a comedy team, and now they're all over the world. And I I am just amazed that people in like in India, India, man, like they love Blue and Rue. It just blows my mind. That's awesome. I what a I I just have to just acknowledge it. What a horrendous, horrific thing to burn down in an animal shelter. <laughs> You know, I just, the, you know, we celebrate uh, the fact that, you know, everybody here on Earth, we're all human beings, but um, some sometimes people just lose that in themselves. So um, yeah. so thankful that Blue was able to survive that and, and thankful it's, that it's you and your wife. It's absolute miracle. Blue yeah, survived. yeah. And so wonderful that you and your wife gave Blue his forever home. Oh, and yeah. um, we, we work for Blue. Blue's the boss. <laughs> Make no mistake. <laughs> Did you always envision yourself writing children's books? No. Uh, now, I've always drawn cartoons and uh, have written my whole life. But prior to my life, uh, as I'm doing now, I was an actor in a truly, truly terrible independent movies, uh, <laughs> such cinematic classics as Santa Claus versus the Zombies in 3D. So you get the idea of the kind of movies I was in. <laughs> so I'm not, I wasn't exactly knocking down Oscar's door. I was, you know. Disappointed I didn't get a Lifetime Achievement Award for my brilliant performance in Hellophone. But uh, we – but, uh, no, I, n- I never expected to be doing what I'm doing now. But I am so happy. I've never been happier. It is – once you start getting um, laughs from people, audiences, like of all ages who love these books and the cartoons, you get addicted to it. Mm-hmm. And you just want to make them laugh harder and harder and harder and longer and longer. That's why each book in the series has gotten progressively more crazy. And I, I couldn't be happier. That's one of I, I'm, I'm wondering, one of the things that I'm hearing these days as I'm listening to comedians talk, they're saying that it's, it's becoming, a, you know, doing comedy is more difficult these days because yeah. people – seem to have, you know, they're hypersensitive about almost everything. Is is that oh, something yeah. that you're running into at all? Um, believe it or not, no. Because, And I'm really surprised that either people aren't paying that close of attention to the jokes I put in the books because the, there are background jokes for the parents and the grown-ups, you know, who have to read these books a million times to their kids. Like mm-hmm. the slapstick up front is for everybody, primarily the kids. Like they, they really like the funny illustrations and – um you know, stuff like that. But there are background jokes, and the background jokes are the uh, just – I'd say they're more PG-rated. Like, they're just uh, they're little twins of darkness to them. But no one has complained about them. So, like, I, I have a, a running joke where each book, there's always a bookshelf. If I can fit one in the book and I put funny fake book titles in them. And there's a running joke. Each book has a different Curious George title in it. Uh-huh. So, like, there, there's, like, Curious George and the Electric Fence uh, – Curious George and the Faulty Wiring. Uh, oh, Pikachu gets run over by a steamroller. Um, a Nightmare on 34th Street. <laughs> it's just, I mean, no one has said anything about it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm super lucky about that. I mean, I, I won't, like, push the envelope too much, of course, because mm-hmm. they are in children's books. But I do like to have an edge mm-hmm. to it because mm-hmm. I don't like cutesy uh, comedy. I mean – cutesy children's books. I think they get enough of that. That's why I just like pure slapstick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, if you could put the Three Stooges or Laurel and Hardy in a cartoon, that's what it is. I, you know, I was just watching the Stooges over the weekend. Um, 
Who's your favorite stooge? Who's your favorite stooge? Uh, it's it's curly. Right answer. Correct. Okay. Yes. Unfortunately, unfortunately, as much as I love curly, I <laughs> I, I I look more like Larry these days. <laughs> I'm the one who's curly. I don't know. Can, can they see this? Is this just going to be audio? No, or can they see the video? Okay. Okay. You guys can't tell, but uh, I, I am I am literally as bald as my character in the books. I am indeed the big bald guy. Well, so, I, I, you bald know, is beautiful. One of one of the, the 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 highlights of my life is I actually saw the Stooges in person on stage. Shut up. Yes. No. Mo, Larry, and Joe. Curly Joe Der- Derita. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was at, at uh, the, the, we had a theme park here in New England called Pleasure Island. It didn't stay open very long, uh, but they would bring in live acts, and the Stooges were on stage, and I got to see them when I was about seven years old. <laughs> oh, my God. I would have lost my mind if I met the Stooges. That is incredible. I'm so jealous of you. Oh, well, uh, I, did, I, I can't say I met them, but I was in the audience and see, see them live. <laughs> Like breathing the same air as the Three Stooges. I mean, even if it was Curly Joe. I mean, but oh my God, I, I would have begged Mo to hit me. He's like, please smack him, call me a nice doll, anything. That well, you know, incredible. that is, you know, um, what humor. One of the things I, I understand that not everybody loves the Stooges, and, and no, not they're everybody. They're wrong, but no, they don't. You know, <laughs> and and. You know, we all have different tastes, but mm. the but the wonderful thing about technology is that if you don't like something, you can turn it off. You yeah. can change the channel. If there's a book that you find in in the bookstore that you don't want your kids to read, don't bring it home. Mm. No. no, you know, um, uh, coffee is incredibly subjective and. Uh, what one person finds hilarious, like, you know, uh, another person will just look at it and they may chuckle or they'll say, I just don't get that mm-hmm. humor. Like, I don't get the the kind of, like, a, a lot of critics will say, though, the funniest movie ever made is something like Some Like It Hot or something from uh, Woody Allen. And I just, I don't see it. I don't, if you ask me, I think the funniest movie ever made is either like Duck Soup or Airplane or The Naked Gun, something just completely crazy. Mm-hmm. But, Stooges yeah. Yep. Yeah. At, uh, well, we're, it, it's obviously we, we share, we have a lot in common because of the same. <laughs> we, we, we just don't have hair in common. We, don't we have just hair. don't have it. Well, th- we are both wearing hoodies, I can see. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I am dressed as an Easter egg here in my tie-dye, oh my in my tie-dye Baltimore um, hoodie that my, my wonderful daughter uh, gave to me. And you are wearing your blue and rue uh, official yes. hoodie. I am a walking billboard. <laughs> I'm about the size of a billboard too, so it works out. Wonderful. What can, you you said that you're you're hearing from people all over the world telling you that they oh, love oh, Blue oh, and oh. Rue. What kind of things are, are you are, are you hearing from folks? Uh, mostly uh, how funny it is. Um, I get a lot of oh, it's so cute, it's so cute. Um, the, some of the stuff I don't understand, so I have to like type it into Google Translate. <laughs> And you can't really rely on Google Translate, so you get stuff like, oh, toaster, make happy, you know, just, just nonsense back. But I always say, oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, we are on every continent except Antarctica, and I know you told me that you have been on Antarctica, like, you know, you know listeners or whatnot. So I'm, you're one up on me, man. I'm jealous of that. If I can crack Antarctica, if anyone in there listening in Antarctica, throw, throw a follow our way. That way I can finally say, every continent, woo! Every continent, woo! But, Corey, I've I've had a blast speaking. This has been a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you so it. much for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed our conversation with John Corey Stringer. Be sure to check out Blue and Rue. Right now, we're really excited to welcome to the show Claire Eckhart. Her book, Bentley and the Magic Six, is a Reading with Your Kids certified great read. Our panel of teachers... Parents and kids gave Bentley and the Magic Sticks five stars. You can read our full review at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the blog and just search Bentley and the Magic Sticks. 
And if you are the author of a fantastic children's book and would love to know more about our Certified Great Read program, you can learn more about that at readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. Scroll on down to Certified Great Reads. Join us right now from Yuma in Arizona. Our guest today is the author of Bentley and the Magic Sticks. Please welcome to the show, Claire Eckerd. Hey, Claire, welcome to the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Thank you so much, Jed. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited about this book, and I can't wait to talk to you about it and share some information with the, your audience. So I'm ready. All right. Well, then let's jump right into it. Who is Bentley, and what's he doing with Magic Sticks? <laughs> well, that's a good question. So so Bentley is actually uh, two different characters. There, there's a real-life Bentley. There was a real-life Bentley. Unfortunately, we lost him. But he was an absolutely magnificent dog that I rescued from the Humane Society here in Yuma. And um, unfortunately, we only had him for a couple of years, but it was like a really good couple of years. And he taught me so much, and, and you know, I think I gave him a, a, a good life while he was with us, and he just inspired me to write this book because um, he was, first of all, almost a prehistoric-looking dog. He was so <laughs> big. He was so big, and he had a... He had a coat like a buffalo. You know, it just felt like a buffalo when you touched him. And um, such, a, such a kind and thoughtful and wonderful character of a dog. But he had a hard time fitting in with the rest of my pack. And, I, you know, I was never sure why, but he was always just a little bit different. So it, it took a while. And unfortunately, um, I don't think he'd been treated very well before we got him, which is sometimes the case. And so, you know, we had to spend a lot of time nursing him back to health and teaching him how to be part of our family and part of the pack. And um, it was very, very rewarding because you could see him coming out of his shell. And he had no, um, no animosity from what he had been through. He was just kind and loving and amazing. And I just feel so fortunate to have had him. So I wrote this book when he was still with us. Um, I just thought that he was such an unusual character and, and such an unusual looking dog. And so I wrote this book, and I also wrote it with the intention of showing a little bit about, um, you know, how it is when you don't quite fit in and you feel a little bit different and, and how you navigate that. And I think a lot of us have been through that situation in life, and a lot of kids go through that situation. So I thought Bentley could be a really good teacher, and, and I hope I've done that. Yeah. You know, I just want to point out, there's so much I want to talk about, but I just want to point out something uh, that, that, that really impresses me. A lot of times when authors come on, you know, they talk about the lessons that kids can learn and the fact that, oh, lots of kids go through this and kids go through that and kids feel this. And something that you did, which is different, is you were talking about the fact that all of us can feel like we don't fit in sometimes. So it's not just a lesson that kids can learn from. It's something that all of us feel from time to time. And I really do think that that is something that all of us feel in, you know, cause we're, we're, we're parts of so many different groups or tribes or circumstances or whatever. And we might feel uber confident in, in one area of our life, but there are other areas in our life that, uh, I don't know. These people seem like they got so much more going on than I could ever think of having. Yeah, that's so true. And, you know, I think that, um, of course, our childhood is where we learn so much and we're influenced by so much. But that doesn't stop, you mm -hmm. know, when we become adults, right? It just keeps going. And life is a learning experience. And I learned so much just, you know, from writing this book and, and thinking about some of these things that I, I've brought up in this book. And I think that it's a really um, – I have a friend of mine, she's 97, she's wonderful, and she says to me, she says, you know, Bentley and the Magic Stick is a book for all age, age, ages, it's not really just a kid's book, you know, it's a book that the parents will enjoy reading to their children, and that they can also relate to, and um, first and foremost, I want my writing to be entertainment, right, I want kids to be entertained by it, I don't want them 
to feel like I'm preaching a lesson to them. So, so first I want them to be entertained, but then if it can give them something to think about or something to learn or something that will make them feel more comfortable in their lives, I think that's just an added bonus. So, uh, so I think hopefully we've done that. You know, they, they, they like you to categorize books, right? The, the bookstores want them categorized. And, and I had put this one sort of in a, in a four to eight um, age group level um, because I had to. But, you know, really it's a zero to at least 97 because mm-hmm. how old my friend is. It's somewhere in that range, right? <laughs> I don't know that they have a bookshelf that says that. But, um, yeah, I just think it's it's so cool. And I, I have to say my illustrator, Anne York, did the most fantastic job with this book. I mean, it's vibrant and it's alive and it's the characters are so endearing and they're all so different. And she really managed to capture all of their different personalities in her illustrations. And I think that um, that's one of the things I enjoy so much about it and, and, and in the feedback that I'm getting Kids are really drawn to this book because of the, those colors and those illustrations. So um, definitely a lot of credit, you know, goes to Ann York for doing that and bringing my characters to life. I, I love that you're talking about Bentley having to learn how to fit into your pack. That yeah. sounds like there's more than one dog in oh, your home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I volunteered at the uh, Humane Society for about 10 years, and then I became a board member. So I was on the board for six years. And I have to tell you that it is virtually impossible to be a part of that organization in any way and not bring home animals, right? Because you see them all the time and your heart goes out to them. And you know you can't help them all, but, um, you know, you can help some. And if you can help a few and your friend can help a few and your, you know, your family can help a few, that's how we get them out of the shelters, and that's so important. And uh, Bentley was just, you know, a, a, a great example of a dog that really needed a change in his, in his life. And um, through the incredible support of the shelter system in this community, um, you know, he managed to find a wonderful home. And even though his life was kind of short, he he had a good life for those last couple of years. And I'm just so glad that we could offer that. And now to see, I have to tell you one of the, the best things of, um, of, of this book now being out there and in the hands of children is to see all of the photographs that their parents are sending me of them sitting there, you know, with a big grin on their face, reading their Bentley book. And I think, oh, my gosh, now his life is touching so many other people and so many kids. And I can't even describe how that feels, you know, as a as a relatively new author to to know that this dog that I love so dearly and this book that that, you know, took a lot of birthing and creation more than I ever imagined, you know, that it would take is now out there and being enjoyed in so many different communities. I actually have people in England and people in Australia who are reading this book. So it's, it's getting out there. It's pretty amazing. That's wonderful. And yeah. I love that this story came about because you chose to love a, a, a living creature. And by sh- opening your arms and, and expressing love, you got so much love in return, and that love spread, literally, as you just said, throughout the world. True. It really is a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. And, you know, uh, Bentley was one of uh, three dogs that I have. I usually have three or four <laughs> at any given time. Um, I've got ten horses. I've got a miniature mule. I mean, you know, at, 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 at a certain point in time, I had multiple chickens and tortoises and all kinds of things, especially as my kids were growing up. And we've really been a family of animal lovers. And I can't imagine our family without animals in it. I I just can't, you know, because they give so much to us. And um, one of the best things to me about animals is they don't judge us. Mm -hmm. They just love us whatever. We can be having a bad day. We can even be ignoring them because we're busy. But we turn around and they're there for us whenever we need them. And I think that children learn so much from having pets. And 
from knowing animals and knowing, you know, the love and the joy that animals can bring and also the responsibility, you know, of taking care of them and even the lesson of death, you know, which is how a lot of children are first introduced to, to end of life. And um, I think that it's, it's just such a gift. I mean, they're, they are truly angels on earth. That's mm-hmm. how I, I think of them. You know, they are, they are our support system, our, our friends, our family. And I, I can't imagine life without, without my animals. So mm-hmm. always grateful for them. Hey, yes. I'm, I know that people are going to want to know where they can go to find out more about Bentley and the Magic Sticks and also find out more about you. Yeah, well, luckily he's he's out there on all the normal kind of dot coms like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart. You know, you can you can pretty much find the book anywhere. Um, and then, uh, as far as me, I have to say my website is just undergoing a big transformation right now. We're just getting it really up and running and adding my latest release, which just came out, um, to it. So um, it will be at www.claireckardauthor.com, but it just may not be working for a few more days. <laughs> so it should be up and running here pretty soon. Well, we're really excited to have had you on, and we encourage everybody to check out Bentley and the Magic Sticks, written by our guest, Claire Eckerd. Hey, Claire, thanks so much for being part of the show. You are so welcome. I've had so much fun, and um, I will come back anytime. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Ruth Maley. She'll be back to celebrate her brand new book, The Power of Kindness. It's a beautiful book. You are going to love it. And Ruth is a fantastic guest. Hey, if you are a parent looking for a great book to add to your family library, you definitely want to check out our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Parents Click Here button at the top of the page. Scroll on down to Certified Great Read. That's where you can find out all about Bentley and the Magic Sticks, uh, the great books from Ruth Maley, and so many other authors. It's all on our website, readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Claire Eckerd. Please be sure to check out her certified great read, Bentley and the Magic Sticks. I also want to thank John Corey Stringer. Be sure to check out his hilarious Blue and Rue series. I also want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan, Justina Thompson, Helen Frazier. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>